sorry, that was just a trying to rally some some attention. <laughs> so uh, we often do sort of a version of this kind of um, kind of session at Northern Roots, just kind of like having several players of slightly different styles together, just to kind of get a chance to kind of hear fiddling side by side from these different different genres. So um, in the middle here we have uh, Nathan and Laura. Uh, from, the, from the Boston Irish scene. So we'll be playing some Irish tunes for us. Mary Fraser over here, kind of with a couple of different styles in her background. She's kind of representing French Canadian music in part here at the festival, but she's also a big old time fiddle player. Becky, also a um, French Canadian player, um, but also um, has played a lot of Irish music, but we'll probably focus on. Well, actually, you have no idea. I, actually, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's the person I know the least about in this particular. <laughs> um, so uh, let's. I, I was thinking that we would, we would, we would have Nathan and Laura kick it off. With, uh, Great. Some yeah. Should we just play some tunes? Yeah. Thanks. Let's play some more tunes. Okay. Um, so yeah, we uh, we mostly play Irish music, but we are also being Americans. We are also who, being Americans. Um, <laughs> who, who, uh, who grammar well. well. <laughs> who both grew up with uh, old time music also in our background. So we have a little bit of that influence. Probably. I didn't know that. I knew that. Yeah. Where was that? I never publicized that. <laughs> it's not on the website. I grew up in southern Indiana. Oh. Uh, and um, both of our dads actually really into old time American music. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we grew up with that. So you played old time there, and Nathan, you played old time music where? Not really. I, I my dad plays a bunch of different uh, folk music festivals. He'd bring me to festivals like the Festival of American Fiddle Tunes, where they have all styles represented. Uh, kind of like this, actually, very similar to yeah. this. And you, so I was exposed to some old time and Irish music. I just gravitated to the Irish music uh, faster than he could pull me to the old time. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> And, Laura, and just briefly, Laura, like, like, where did you first get into Irish music? In in Southern Indiana, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who was who was playing? Who was in that community there? Uh, I went to daycare at Gray Larson's house. <laughs> <laughs> so we know Gray Larson. This That's great. Why, this is why I hold this festival so I can find out. <laughs> daycare at Gray Larson's. Yeah, wow. and my dad and he and used to play together a lot too because he played some old time music as well. That's right. Um, yeah. But I always wanted to play what he played. Wow. <laughs> great. Okay. All right. So, what do you got to play for tunes? Uh, what do you play? Uh, Let's play some, some jigs. Jigs, okay. Yeah, yeah. jigs is... Got anything in your mind? Um... How about those, um, what are those two that, um... <laughs> Let's play them. Let's just play that one, yeah? Something short. What about into, um... Pied of Rock Pebble? Uh, maybe, yeah, one. yeah, sure.
of started, but kind of like in terms of you know, your maturation like as players, like could you someday identify? <laughs> so could you identify for this like one. <laughs> any like influences or, or particular styles, sub styles, or regions that you have kind of shaped your playing more? Yeah. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Um, the quick version for me is that I grew up uh, in the Midwest, in Madison, Wisconsin, in the Twin Cities, and Liz Carroll has a huge footprint around those parts, but I also uh, spent a lot of time in Ireland uh, a little bit later, and in, in the Twin Cities with like some, like Patty O'Brien was a, is an accordion player who's kind of a mentor for me, and he's an outspoken proponent of like a um, kind of a minimalist, st simple focus on the melody. And so there's a lot of players like Brian Rooney um, and Creedy O'Reilly and James Kelly, uh, who would be, you know, there's a focus on the kind of simple fiddle melody and don't, as opposed to don't like think it. heavy ornamentation, you mean, or as a variation, or what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, you say focus on the melody. What do you mean? Um, I, I guess like. Uh, <coughs> I would say, like, yeah, or, to, like, ornament, lots of ornament. I used to put lots of ornament. I do put or, lots of ornamentation into things, but, like, Patty would always tell me, just play the long notes. Just, <laughs> play, just the long play the notes. long notes, oh. you know, stop trying to do all sorts of stuff. Um, so trying to play without a lot of affect and just kind of being even keeled with stuff mm -hmm. to some degree would be, like, part of his. If you listen to someone like James Kelly's playing, it's it's... Very, um, it's very pure and very. It's the same time as being technical and lots of ornamentation. He's not like <laughs> Patty would listen to some uh, someone playing sometimes and say, "That sounds like a young buck showing off." <laughs> yeah. And so. yeah, that was not what Patty O'Brien was into. He the first time I met Patty O'Brien, he yelled at me. I was like 14 years old. He's like, "Slow down." <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, we were at a festival in Quebec one time, and Patty was there, and I was sitting with him, and we were listening to, um, to a French-Canadian band, and he said, uh, what do you think of this music? Uh, and I said, uh, it's great, I love French-Canadian music. I, I said, uh, what do you think of it, Patty? Ah, oh, it's like, it's like party music, it's like... <laughs> or, or maybe he, he might have said circus, or there was something about yeah, it. Right, right, yeah, circus. Yeah. Yeah. Circus. It, it yeah. wasn't wasn't quite his style. It wasn't positive. But I love French Canadian music, and that's why we're going to go to the <laughs> 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 Through 
Yeah. So just to, just, uh, just to kind of, and then and then to say nice. say something about like your transition of going from old time music to, to French, French Canadian. Um, I like broke a hair on the first <laughs> note. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, old time tunes. Play like ducks on a mill pond. That's like a very common. Everyone learns that one at some point. Um, <laughs> chops and he's doing lots of crazy bow moves and really like um, impressing everyone. <laughs> you think I'm good at that. <laughs> um, yeah, whereas like Andre Ali, which that tune I played was from, is also kind of like a messier play player. He puts double stops in and he's got like some crunch to his bowing and um, so it's really fun going from old time because there's definitely some crossover, um, and yeah. It's play, play the step of two forms one more time for us. Yeah. And go back to it again. and like the B part kind of there's skips and then kind of land heavier on, on the bow and it come back down like that so you can hear that little bit of air in there where the bow's not actually touching the string and then it comes down heavier um, and I hear that in a lot of, with a lot of cable cloth fiddlers of the, the older ones especially um, do that and then they'll throw like not a ton of ornaments in, like that tune has like one ornament. And um, there's also a wide variety as far as ornaments go. Um, but kind of my favorites, like Joe Bouchard and Andre are a little sparse with the ornaments. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really nice because then when that ornament comes along, it's like, ooh, ooh, I, I spotted oh one. <laughs> and it's really exciting. So. Yeah. Like, what do you want to play? Um, uh, well, um, my playing is really informed by dancing a lot, so I thought I'd play a couple of tunes, Irish tunes that I play for dancing. Um, I thought I'd play the Heron, the Corn, a Johnny Jordy tune from the north of Ireland, and then play, play my, my Love is in America, so if you want to join in on the second tune at some point. Um,
and Brendan Mulvihill. What do you, what do you remember of Brendan? Like, what, what were some of Brendan's? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a lot of people were terrified of Brendan. And <laughs> 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 um, he would have a very, you know, if, if you didn't play what he thought was right, he could have a pretty scathing, just little something to say, you know, like, those are my sound sort of English or something like that. You know. Ouch. Um, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember walking into the, the, the first class I did with him. At first I took a class with him at, at Augusta Heritage Arts and uh, we walked into the room and there was the tune on the board. It was like, okay, copy that tune down. So you know, <laughs> copy, copy the tune out. Boeing for Boeing, and you know everything, uh, uh, and that was like. Then we had to learn it note for note, exactly the way he had written it out, yeah. um, which was very different. I've never taught like that ever, you know. But um, do you remember what that tune was? Uh, it was the Blackberry Blossom, but I can't even play it now. Oh. It, it was. Um, I'd have to go back and yeah. dredge it up. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, when I when when I started working with him one on one, it didn't feel that scary. Although sometimes he would want, you know, he I would bring tunes I wanted to learn from him, and once in a while it's like I wouldn't know why, but he would just be like, "No, I'm not teaching you that tune." Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> Laura, so, so I didn't get over to you like in that third year round asking about like your later influences or yeah. what kind of shape you're playing for them. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say going back to Patty O'Brien, it's really interesting that a lot of tunes that we played in Southern Indiana uh, were actually tunes that had come from Patty O'Brien. So Patty would have like a lot of his own versions of tunes that Nathan learned a lot of, um, and you know he's very adamant about okay, this is how this tune should be played. I mean, it's his version. Like a lot of people have their own versions, but he's particularly adamant about his versions, um, no for no. And so we would play this, these same tunes in Indiana. It's because of somebody who was a huge influence on my playing, Jamie Gans, um, who's a great oh, yeah. Irish folk yeah. player. Yeah. And yeah, you know Jamie. Um, and uh, also a great old-time player, and his wife Mara is a dancer, and um, really big part of that, that community. So I'd say his playing was very influential on me. Um, and then when I was a bit older, like going to these camps and festivals like this, like I took a lot of lessons with James Kelly. Um, so he was pretty influential on in my playing. I always really loved his playing. Um, and yeah, I'd say those those two are probably the biggest influences on my playing, at least early on. And I don't know, I try to take influence from people that I play with uh, that just kind of inspire me in the way that they play. But I feel like, like the two of you together, like in your playing, like you have like a certain kind of, like it's, um, uh, like it's not rushed, there's a certain kind of like lilt that you have when you're playing, it's, like there's a certain kind of pulse I feel like like you guys would gravitate towards. Yeah, I, I'm kind of thinking about it like listening to you guys play where you have the more French Canadian influence, both of you. I feel like there's a lot of in um, emphasis on the two and the four. Is that right? Like it feels like the two and the four, and then I would be more inclined to be emphasizing the one and the three, uh -huh. like even more than your average Irish player, I think. Or at least that's what I've been told. It's at least more of the three than the average Irish player. And that's, I feel like, a little bit of the old time influence for me, but I don't know. It's yeah. hard to really categorize. You were going to say something, Nathan? Was that oh, I was going to ask Laura about her time. So we both live in Boston currently, but uh, and have for quite a while. But before that, you lived in New York. Yeah. What were some of the, who were some of the fit players or musicians that you played with frequently there? Yeah, I mean, New York City is a great place for Irish music. Um, lots of sessions. Um, I would say, like, didn't really play with Tony DeMarco, but played alongside Tony DeMarco quite a lot. Um, and he's, he's like his own, he's his own style. I don't know that he's, he would say he's a New York Sligo player, mm -hmm. um, which is 
you know, a very particular style, but he's got his own thing going on, like genius player um, and very influential. Also spent some time in Southern Indiana right. um, with Thomas Sparks down there. Um, and just, I, I, I saw Tony DeMarco, I think at the Champlain Valley Festival years ago, Tony, pretty big guy, <coughs> wearing a black leather cowboy hat, <coughs> a black leather vest only, <laughs> uh, and sunglasses <laughs> and playing. Not a guy you'd kind of really quickly approach for like directions or. You know. Yeah, but beautiful light touch and really yeah. nice guy. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just sort of painting him like a, like a picture. <laughs> picture. Yes, or, yes. Yeah. He's a character. Yeah, he's also somebody that you might be afraid of the first time you encountered him. Um, all right, well, uh, do you guys have, like, so you, just getting back to your thing about, like, rhythmic stuff and one and the one and the three, do you, do you want to play something and have us listen for that? Sure. Should we play something with four, like, a reel? Let's play a polka with the emphasis on the two and the four. <laughs> um, yeah, and we'll be counting. <laughs> want to play the Blackberry Blossom? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can we play that set? What goes before that? Um, Put that on a set on something. Ten years. Um, like I used to listen to fiddle players who were more like even, I'd say. And uh, there's within Irish music, there's amazing technical players like uh, Liam O'Connor, who he's an incredible virtuosic uh, fiddler, and he's plays a bunch of great tunes. And he would play tunes like kind of more evenly. And I think one thing that we do when I play with you is I try and get into your rhythm. Which um, there's other players like Aidan Connolly that have a totally different emphasis, who they tend to emphasize they emphasize the like. 
there's like swells and there, but I mean it's very even. Um, the Kane sister would be like extremely even. Aiden would be like a little bit more kind of swelly, swelly yeah, <laughs> with a backbeat emphasis. So yeah. it's I think playing with you, I, I like to try and play with whoever, like play into the, lean into the things that make it different and unique in a way. And our playing can kind of do that because we both have a tendency to follow that path. <laughs> Yeah, to take that. it a little off kilter into the more into the swing territory, um, mm -hmm. more a greater swing percentage maybe yeah. um, than some players. And yeah, I remember my teacher Aaron Trader telling me, like Irish music is smoother than you can imagine. And she was just trying to even me out. And like as long as I'm thinking, trying to make it even that I'll get part way there, you know? <laughs> so in your reels, for example, you're, you're talking about like making the notes as even as, yeah, as possible? Yeah, yes. And also I was noticing when you were playing the French Canadian tune and talking about, what did you call it, the bow skipping mm -hmm. or jumping or something like yeah. that? You would never take your your bow off the string in Irish music. Yeah. It just wouldn't, wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, and... I feel like in old time music you do a little bit, but it's in a much more subtle way, right? Like you're kind of like correcting the bow direction almost, like. Yeah. But you you still have your bow basically on the string, but in French Canadian it sounds like you're really coming down and using that lift of the bow. So I think the bowing is a big part of that. And that and and, and that and that kind of bowing, you think affects your rhythmic, like the rhythm. Like the evenness of the notes, the way you're playing. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's all about you know your bow direction, where you're putting the slurs, like where you're combining notes and where you're keeping them separate, whether you're up bow, down bow. And and when you guys play together, do you think a lot about about coordinating your bowing? No. No. <laughs> we used to actually, if you look at old videos of us, we used to have like the exact same bowing. To some degree, like there really? was, like, yeah, you, me, and John Doms when the three of us were sitting together in a couple old videos of the Catskills from like 2010 or something, and we're playing the same tune. Like everybody's bow is doing the same thing. Hmm. It's doing this one particular pattern that James Kelly calls surfing in Hawaii, baby. No, where, that was my teacher. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm. Yeah, like we would, we would all Aaron. do. What's that? That was Aaron's. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's been around. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I've heard it from. Um, but but the idea of just like all of us doing the same thing nowadays, I think we have slightly different um, Boeings. I'm thinking of like Aiden Connolly sometimes, and I'm thinking of other. There's like a fiddle player named Claire Egan, uh, who's a brilliant fiddle player from London, now living around Dublin. Who there's a, a when I'm teaching a workshop I, I, on fiddle specific stuff, I end up playing this video all the time because she's playing a tune. And, um, she's playing last night's fun in C, and she does this one bow. It's on YouTube. She does this one bow stroke that lasts like three measures, oh. and but her her lilt is still perfect. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And it's yeah. it's crazy because her bow is moving at an even speed, but the way she's moving her like her left hand and the pulse in her wrist makes it sound you know like just distinct. Yeah. So it's really subtle. It's like yeah, yeah, speed and pressure. Yeah, like, yeah. I would I would tell my students never, never, never do that. <laughs> like yeah, no, your I mean, slur should never last more than three notes. Like stop slurring. <laughs> That's what I would yeah. always tell my students. Because um, people have a tendency to slur, like slur just randomly Willy and too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I tell, yeah, just you, play all single bows. You are, you're often using that phrase, the, the, the surfing in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, where, where did you get that? Where did I get it first time? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. All right, well, back to French Canadian then. Um, <laughs> get another tune, right? Um, sure. Um, um, Real de Cordonnier, which I don't know what that is, but it's another little will tune.
so, so just, just uh, some people here play a lot of cricket tunes, but not everybody does. So play it again, and I'm just going to count it out. Because so, so the, yeah. the A part is in four beat phrases, and then the B part is mostly in three beat phrases. Yeah. Um. They do pretty much all of them have to line up with the uh, figure of the tune. Um, so I'm sure that happened a lot back in the day. Give a glad to inspired with square dances around New England. Um, not as much these days, but yeah, a lot of cricket tunes. And that's another uh, crossover with old time and Give a that there's that cricket tune thing going on. But it is interesting that, like, I mean, we've been in Quebec where there's a dance being called, a social dance, that is like a, it's essentially a 32-bar dance, and with the band playing a 32-bar tune, but the dancers not being, or the caller not being particularly concerned to make them line up. Mm. Like, even though they could line up, <laughs> if the dancers are, like, a little bit slower, kind of getting around, then they just wait until bar three, of the top of the tune to start calling the top of the dance. Right, they just listen for the caller, and you're just dancing to the beat. Your, your feet are just, you know, you're, you're walking along. You can walk along to that tune, but and so just wait until think, the caller tells you what to do, and then you go. And you think, yeah. okay, well, that's why we invented crooked tunes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where do you want to play, Becca? Uh, I think I'll play Tune Yours. Good choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'll play. Um, a hornpipe called The Restless One for Dan Restivo, who uh, we had him here at the festival a number of years ago. And I think we taught him this tune. Because he, you know, he moves about. He's not here anymore. He's gone back to Ireland, so he's a little restless. <laughs>
You ever come across Daniel Stevo? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. From like, like the Catskills, or where do you where do you see Dan? Definitely in the Catskills a lot. I slept on his couch when he lived here at some point, I think. <laughs> um, but he's been, he comes to, he used to come to Boston all the time, uh, or pass through anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You learned was it McGlinchey too? Some, there was a couple some tunes that you learned from from Dan. Um, yeah, what is it called? Um, Cap and Bells. I can't. I can't remember. Was it this. McGlinchey? There were some tunes. Is that a McGlinchey tune? Mm. There were some tunes that you had learned from Dan that kind of put that sort of sound of that of that tune of mind. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's part of it. Um, and Nathan Moore, how about like another? Like um, like some polkas or some some sort of different kind of tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polkas. Sure, yeah. Can we play that? Or slides or something or whatever you want. Yeah. Maybe. James Kelly. One. Or um. So James Kelly and then the part G four. Sure. For Begley. Mm -hmm. Dedicate a couple polkas to Seamus Begley. Oh. Amazing, yeah. He passed away. He recently. just passed away. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Every time I turn on radio and a guilt talk, there's a, he's singing on it, and it's just gorgeous. He's an incredible uh, accordion player. He's in the funniest person I've ever met. He would always say uh, things that you can't repeat uh, in play. Like <laughs> but he, he's just he always had a great one-liner for everything, and would be playing polkas uh, until five in the morning uh, <laughs> on your average. Yeah. Maybe the festival. Yeah. So for context. Polkas are played in Irish music. Um, we were playing a concert a couple of weeks ago, and my partner was there who doesn't play, he's a musician, but he doesn't play Irish music. And he was like, we said we we're going to play polkas. And he's like, is that, is that a joke? <laughs> we're like, no, it's real. Polkas are big in Irish music, especially in Southern Ireland, in a particular area of, of uh, Southern Ireland. Cork and Kerry and Steve Bluegrass. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll play, um, we'll play two books. Uh, the first is James Kelly's composition, Happy Days, and the second one is uh, Power of the Peace. What's the first one? Is it? <laughs> 
part. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Part. I forget what it's called. Do you ever play that? Did you ever build a good one too? Um, mm, Let's just have a good one. Key. Key. Um, yeah, you could be